And welcome to the Stay at Home Podcast. Episode 5, take 2. You wouldn't even believe, <laughs> because you won't see it, that we literally just filmed an entire show with the stupid microphone off. Yep. So, ep- so week 4, episode 4, chaos. Uh, as chaotic as episode 4 was, we, it, it, it just had some lingering At least it had sound. Right? <laughs> it had sound. I mean, it was crazy as hell, but it had sound. <sighs> I went a little overboard on the videos. You know, you guys weren't very impressed with the videos. but no. and, it was, and it was kind of funny. Two Generations, One Podcast. Um, I, I don't know. But it was funny. To me, it was funny. They were funny to me. They weren't that funny. Y'all just didn't get it. No, I didn't yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all just didn't get it. No, I didn't get it. Yeah. But it's okay. I still love y'all. <laughs> so we did have our little co-host, uh, Kaylin. Um, she pretty much like was super excited to come join us for that. Yeah, for she that was. second part. She was super excited for that. So glad she got to do that. They actually had a concert right now. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right. So. All right. So we're gonna go with um, your bit. And we're going to talk about um, the new Jedi Survivor game, and you get to explain it for the second time. I think explain it all over again. All over. So, but now at least you get you can talk about the first one a little bit and how it went into the second one. You know. Yeah. Because I know everything now. They don't, but I do. Oh, well, my favorite thing about the game, the Jedi Survivor, the new one. My favorite thing was that it was like a continuation of the first game. Yeah. Like. In the first game, you started off with two lightsaber, or no, you start off with one lightsaber stance. At the end of the game, you had two. In this game, you at the end of the game, you had I think like five or six. And it, every ability that you learned in the first game, you could do at the start of the second game. So you didn't like lose any progress. They didn't like downgrade your character. So you know, they like they didn't take the easy route. They built completely off of the first game like it felt like a sequel yeah so it felt like part two of a movie you yeah know? It, felt felt like, it felt like a sequel to a movie they were res- they respected everything that you did in the first game yeah. and they keep bringing it up in the second game which is good because when games are like that then it makes playing the second game like a lot easier mm-hmm. you know because uh, it's like uh, Halo followed this whole series and Halo was kind of like the same way where Halo, you literally left off where you started. Like, when Master Chief was, like, knocked out in the middle of space, that's where somebody found him, knocked out in the middle of space. Yeah. You know, they kind of revived him. You know? So, so what other things did you did you like about the game? Um, I like the story. I think I like the story more than the first game. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was kind of chaotic a little bit, but I liked it. It was... It was good. It it was a little weird. It didn't feel like it was all that important. Gotcha. Because, I mean, I thought it was pretty cool because, like, I, I thought you guys were actually... I thought you're that character that you were... I thought that character was, like, a character that you created for the game. You know how, like, some games you, yeah, you like build you your own... One. Yeah, you make your own character. And then I saw you going up against Darth Vader, and I was just like, oh, he's going to kick Darth Vader's ass. <laughs> but then, no... <laughs> no. no, that didn't happen. No, she died. You got pretty close. He had like this much health left, this much, <laughs> and then cutscene, and death, and then death. I was so sad when Seer died. I knew she was gonna die. Yeah, you told me that. You're like, I don't think she's gonna live. I don't think she's gonna live. Uh uh-uh. And then when she did, and I was just like, oh, yeah. And then I was wondering, like, okay, well, who's gonna be your freaking? Who's gonna be your enemy now? And then when you went into that one place and there was that guy in there that was like the boss or the... Oh, Bo. Yeah, the captain of that place or whatever. Oh. That officer. Oh, because we were trying to find the guy that betrayed us. Yeah. but So I thought he was going to be one of the guys that was like a final guy that you destroyed. No, it wasn't but, him. No, definitely wasn't him. No. It was definitely that other guy. Yeah, it was Bo, the guy who betrayed us. Yeah. I, I was sad because I already knew that he was going to betray us because someone spoiled it online. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you're probably spoiling it for other people, so... No, none of my friends are going to play the game except for Ty, and Ty already beat it, I guarantee you. If Ty is watching this, he already beat the game. Uh, right? All right. 
unless he yeah I guarantee you he already beat it yeah so what do you think the what do you think the next one's gonna be about I have no idea like where do you think where do you, where can they go like based on a storyline from what you know like where where can they even make another one fit in or do they have to come up with a whole nother thing I don't know because my my guess would be that the next game is that they're gonna find Jedi survivors but at the same time if they find more Jedi survivors like they can't exist into the movie time period because there were no more Jedi so it's like I don't know what they're gonna do because the main character Cal wants to take down the Empire but he, I, we all know that he's not the one that does it. Yeah. You know, he was not involved at all. So it's like, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> like, I don't know what they're going to do and keep it within canon. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't know what they're going to do either. Like I was, I was saying in the, in the first episode where we lost sound, uh, the first one I sucked at. I sucked at the. Oh. I couldn't even. I couldn't even grab on the wall. Like no, it was so hard. It's because in the in the so f- technical in the first game, every time that you grabbed onto another surface, you had to press like the left trigger or right trigger, or something. You had to press a trigger, and but in the second game, your character just automatically grabbed it. You didn't have to worry yeah. about pressing a button to make him grab it. So it was way easier than parkour. And I suck at parkour. <laughs> so it was way easier. And I'm good at that stuff because I play Assassin's Creed games and you need parkour in Assassin's yeah. Creed. You know, because you got to be able to jump from building to building. Mm-hmm. You're climbing up walls. You're doing all kinds of stuff. You're jumping into baskets and stuff. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then I get into this stupid Jedi game that I thought was going to be cool. And it seemed like it was cool. And then... The whole training thing, and I was like, yeah, I can't even make it past this And I also think the parkour was, I don't think it was as big of a... Of a deal? In the set. Well, I don't know. I played the first one before I played the second one. I feel like the parkour was harder in the first... Well, not, not parkour. There was puzzles in the first one. Gotcha. I don't remember if there was any puzzles in the second one. I don't know. I only watched you play from where you got your butt kicked by Vader. Yeah. Well, I guess there was puzzles in the second one, but they were nowhere near as hard as the first one. Yeah. Because the first game, I remember I did, like had no idea. Even replaying the first game, I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> like, so many times, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Right. But in the second game, there was times where I was like, I would get irritated and be like, oh, what am I supposed to be doing? And then I look at the map and it was like really obvious. Gotcha. Yeah. But also that could just be a me problem because I learned in the first game to always look at the map. But it took me a while to actually start using the map. Using the map to, to get around? Yeah. So maybe when I played the second game, I was already like used to using the map. So it was just easier. Yeah. Yeah. Maps are good. Yeah, Ma- maps are good. Maps are nice. I think I just didn't like having to like depend on a map. I just wanted to naturally, naturally figure it out. Right. Mm. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they got next. You got another what year, year or two before they probably uh, come out. Yeah. How how long was it before? Was it like a year or two years? Because uh, that game, that other Jedi game was out for like a while. Mm-hmm. It was out for a while before it came on the Game Pass. Um. I don't know when the first game came out. I want to say, like, maybe 2020. So maybe we'll see the next game, like, 2026 or something. Maybe, I don't know. I would guess, like, two years at a minimum, three to four. Right. Because I think they've already announced the new, or they're announcing the next Modern Warfare game to come out. But then again, Modern Warfare 2 came out when I was in Korea. Okay, but those Call of Duty games come out like every single year. They always they they it's it goes like this. It goes Modern <laughs> Warfare, Black Ops. Modern Warfare, Black Ops. Yeah. That's like, how they do it. You the Call of Duty fans cannot complain about games taking too long to come out. Because they get <laughs> I well I guess maybe they can complain if they're bad. I don't know if they're bad or not, because I don't really care about Call some, of Duty games. But some of them are just some of them were just terrible. Like this, some of them were just pretty bad. Like, 
Not even worth jumping in and playing it. I wonder if there's like fans that would like rather have less of them and higher quality. Because they can't be all that high quality if they're pumping them out every single year. So what they do is they pump in so much into the multiplayer aspect of the game yeah. that they don't really care too much about the storyline. So they'll feed you like a comic book storyline for the Modern Warfare timeline that they come out with a new boss all the time or a new character. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? For every game, there's this new meathead that they have to go after. You know what I mean? And then... Uh, <clears throat> And then that's who you go after in the game, right? And then sometimes they like to do you dirty, and they'll bring back old characters. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, like uh, Ghost and Price. Those are my two favorite guys. I love those guys. They're pretty cool. And they brought them back. They brought them back. At least they brought they brought um, Ghost back in this game. They've brought Price back before. You know what I mean? So like, it's it kind of goes fifty fifty on what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a I don't know, but. The storyline for this last one was like real it to me it was pretty good but I mean it went like back and forth you know you fought cartel you fought this you fought that and and when you go through the map and you see everything the whole storyline that you that you fight when you see a season come in it's something from the campaign that they're pulling in like this this season 3 they brought the cartel into this one Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of like Mexican stuff going in there and this is the first time I actually spent money and got bought a bunch of those characters So now I got all these like Mexican characters Mexican music for my cars and stuff, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean? you know, so it's actually pretty cool Yeah, as for, for the rest of the time man, I didn't buy no battle pass. I'm not paying for that stuff. Yeah, you know But I don't know it's it's Call of Duty is a whole nother thing. I like playing it because you get to run around with teams. Sometimes I run around by myself and just harass people and just take them out. You know, and if I get taken out, oh well, I'll come back. <clears throat> but now, yeah. stupid Call of Duty, but I still love it. I don't really care for that. <laughs> I know. Uh, you're a Halo guy. Yeah. Well, Halo's not even that great anymore. Mm, the newest one isn't that wasn't. I mean, I thought they were. I thought the newest Halo one was going to be a lot better than the um, Halo Infinite or whatever that one came out. I thought that was going to be better than the other ones, but they had better multiplayers in the other Halos than they did with this one. Yeah. And then when it first came out, there was only like what two maps? Three, yeah, there was two, like three four maps. or five maps. Yeah, it was like so stupid. You played the same map the entire time, and I remember me and you were like playing it. We were getting good at it, and then it was just like, like, buddy, we played the same map like 50 freaking times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and this they, is so dumb. And they weren't like that memorable. No. And they weren't coming out with anything great. No. They have like no content at the first, the beginning of the game. No, nothing. I don't even know what they have now because I just lost so much interest in that. I just like, I lost so much interest in Halo Infinite that I literally went back to playing Call of Duty. Yeah. I stopped playing Call of Duty because I was like, oh yeah, this Halo thing's going to be really cool. And then it really was up. And it, it was cool for like five seconds. It's kind of like a sad story because I feel like it had potential, but it just wasn't reached. Yeah. I thought the campaign was okay. The campaign was fine. The campaign was fine. Open world. I like open world type of stuff. So the campaign for me was fine, but it was just the, the multiplayer aspect, which is the playability for replayability for me. Yeah. That didn't hit the spot. I just thought it was funny because they released the multiplayer before they released the campaign. And the campaign was like so much better. Right. <laughs> like, it definitely was. I just wish they would have had the multiplayer like um, Ghost Recon does where you can actually, y'all two can be on the same map together and do missions. You know what I mean? Like if I have a mission that I completed already and you didn't. You can go hit, you can select the mission that you want, and then I can hit replay, and then we can go do the mission together. Mm -hmm. And then when you complete it, you get credit for completing it. I think the you problem know? with Halo is that the people that make Halo need to just make a Halo game. It's like they keep trying to like change Halo or like make a Call of Duty Halo skin game, or I don't know. Like they keep trying new things instead of just doing what worked. Right. 
Just, like, give, just give us a story. We Nobody cared about following a storyline in Halo. We knew there was going to be a story. We knew you're going to follow the storyline. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you knew when you go into multiplayer, you're going to have all these different maps from all the different places that you went to. Like, Halo was not going to become as big as Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty. Like, but it still I feel has like a huge fan base. It does have a huge fan base, but I just feel like with they keep trying to make Halo something it's not. Right. Like, instead of just making a Halo game, they want to make a Halo open world game. They want to make a Halo multiplayer that has a battle pass and skins. And, like, <laughs> it's just frustrating. Like, just make a Halo game. Right. Like... Every game changes something, but they, I don't know, it's like they change so much, is they, and they just ignore things that make Halo, Halo. Right. I think they were trying too hard to fit into the rest of these other games, because you like, Red Dead went open world, um, who else is open world? Um, Assassin's Creed's are open world, more open world now. Um, that's a, uh, Grand Theft Auto was open world. You could switch back and forth between characters, and you can pick this mission or that mission. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'd have different things you can do. Like it was like, it's just I don't know. I think I think everybody was trying to get on that level. Yeah, it's like the people that make Halo keep trying to ride the waves of other games, right? Instead of just riding like the Halo wave. And and that's a good thing about the Call of Duties and the Modern Warfare's is they follow a storyline from start to finish. You don't go into no open world where you get to pick what happens next. Yeah. No, you go through in one spot and say you found the intel. The cutscene is going to be you and someone else looking at the intel. All right, we got to go get this guy now. And then you go after that guy. See, like, and that's your next wave yeah. that you go through. Then you take that guy down, and then this guy down, and then that guy down, until you get to the end, and then the, then the thing's over. I feel like Halo would have, I feel like the open world would have been better as like a side Halo game. I don't know if they should have went open world in the main Halo game. Because one thing that I liked about Halo is I liked all the characters. Mm. And what they did in this game is, like, had almost no characters. Like, the only familiar character was Master Chief. It was Master Chief, the pilot, and the new AI. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I think she called herself Cortana at the end anyways. So. Yeah, I don't remember. But there was, like, three characters and then the bad guys. Yeah. And I don't know, like, what happened to the Arbiter? Like, they just don't <laughs> care about things that made Halo, Halo. Right. Like, I don't know. For me, it's just like... But, like, the people who made the original Halo games, Bungie, every single Halo game after Halo 1, you could play as the aliens, as the elites. Yeah. But ever since the new people took over, we haven't been able to play as them. Like, why? Like, why are you taking rid of the... So I just don't understand. Yeah, that. so I, I remember looking that up one time uh, a while ago to try to figure out why we couldn't play as like the Arbiter or something like that. And and what what somebody was saying that is that the models for the aliens were so big that yeah, they, they didn't have the crouch. Yeah, they didn't have to. They they would have to like shrink them down or do something to them to where they were small enough to be like the same size as like the Spartans. Mm -hmm. They made them crouch. Yeah. But it, but I understand that's a problem. But like, they made it work before. Yeah. Why it, can't you make it work but, again? Oh right. How many times have you been into other games where you, you jump into the game as a as an uh, the what whatever those aliens are called? You know what I mean? The arbiter. You come into the game as an arbiter. Yeah. Like, like that, that, and they were the same size as the other characters. And no difference. Another thing that annoyed me is that. You didn't have split screen. Oh yeah, the like split things screen. that made Halo Halo, they just take away. Yeah, you had split screen in the multiplayer, but you didn't have split screen in the um. What? Well, no, there was no split screen in multiplayer. There was there. No, there was split screen in the multiplayer. There's no split screen on the and, campaign. Well, I know. Yeah, the campaign, and that's what I'm saying. Like they should have made the campaign to where it, you could have been like, even if you can't do split screen campaign, like do it like Ghost Recon does, and you can join someone else's game you can join a friend's game and you're both in the same map at the same time and you can you, both go run around together and you can do missions. that now but they didn't add that to like i think six months after it released really it was like way like way too late that's crazy maybe we'll have to start again and just play together i don't know 
But that's a, can, lot, of, that's a you, lot of work, though. You can play together now if you have two Xboxes, but you can't split screen. That's stupid. That was dumb, because I, I enjoyed playing all of those together all the time. Yeah, you know me what I mean? too. And it was like our thing is every Halo game that came out, we were going to sit down and beat the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are going to beat every Halo. Uh, and then we play multiplayer, and all those little eight-year-old squeak boxes are smoking us. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not very good at video games. Getting teabagged by some eight-year-old. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm. Well, enough of that soapbox, I think, before we get going on a whole other rabbit hole. We went down one and went into another one. And I know. Sorry. I accidentally talked about Halo too much. No, you're good. We went, we went from Jedis to Jedis to Halos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jedi to Master Chief. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is something that hits a little bit home hard for me, um, and that's in a couple of Mondays, uh, it's this crazy day called Memorial Day. And Memorial Day has gotten so monotonized, mon 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 is that what you call it or something like monetized, that? Monetized, monetized? Yeah, so monetized, right? Commercialized. And commercialized. Like, everybody has sales. Everybody has this. Everybody has that. And... And I think a lot of people really just kind of lost what Memorial Day is supposed to be about. Right. You know, and it's about those those that fell in combat and for those that succumbed to mental wounds from being in combat and committed suicide or something, you know, just died because, because of brokenheartedness or something, you know. Like those that didn't make it very far once they came back. Mm -hmm. You know, because anybody that goes out there and goes into combat and comes back is not gonna be the same. You could say you're gonna be the same and you can try to pretend that, like you're the same person, but you're not. Right. It's, it, you're not. You can mask it all you want, but it doesn't, it's, it's always gonna be there, you know? Yeah. And so, and it's crazy because so many people like have come up to me on Memorial Day and they're thanking me for my service. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the biggest number one no-go for Memorial Day. You know? Because you want to honor those that pass. You want to honor those that fall. That's why a lot of times on Memorial Day, I don't even go anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, my my head is so full of, like, the friends and people that I knew and the, you know, the other people that never made it home that I don't want to go out and have someone continuously thank me for my service. Right. Because when you're in active duty, you can tell when you're active duty. The stupid haircuts, you know what I mean? The way you walk, talk. Sometimes when you got out of state plates or something like that in a place, like they know. People know. People can tell. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people can tell. So, and I, and I hate that. I hate that all the time because that's not what it's, it's not what it's for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to honor those that have fallen and to honor those that fell after they came back. Right. You know, that's what Memorial Day is for. But everybody's worried about I want to go get this grill on Memorial Day or I'm going to go get this TV <laughs> you know I'm going to go get this couch I'm going to go get this car you know we got all these deals going on stuff, yeah. you know what I mean it's just like dude like go get the couch the next day or something you know what I mean like how about you go visit uh, you know uh, a graveyard that where there's veterans that were buried you know what I mean because there's like there's so many veterans that get buried without family members or friends and a lot of it probably has to do with they came home, they're a little freaking cuckoo, you know what I mean? And, you know, back then, and I would say even now, but maybe it's, it's getting better, but mental health wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Mental health was a sign of weakness. So, you know, these veterans came back, these, these guys came back from Vietnam, and they were kind of, you know, a little, a little out there. Which is to be expected, you know what I mean? Right. After everything they went through, right? And, you know, they probably lost family members, friends, and nobody wanted to talk to them, nobody wanted to be around them because they didn't take care of the mental issues because of the stigma that was attached with mental illness. Yeah. Which, if you had mental illness, you were weak. Which is horrible. It is. And, and if you went to the VA and you tried to go through the Army before with those types of things, they literally just fed you these little pills and said, here you go. Take this and get out of here. You know? Yeah. So they didn't really help you. They didn't no. really do anything. 
they weren't addressing the core issues. No, they weren't. They weren't taking care of anybody. And, and if, if they would have learned from World War One, World War Two, and Viet, like I think after Vietnam is when they finally learned something about it and finally started trying to do something about it, you know. But it wasn't until recently, maybe like 2012, 2012, 2013, maybe is when they finally like started making it more natural for you to go get help and actively seek help. Mm -hmm. You know, so it it was just it's just terrible. Like you you can't send people to war, expect them to come back normal. And if they're not normal, which they're not going to be, and there's something off, help them out. Right. Don't just abandon them. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't just push them off to the side. You know. Yeah. Help them out. You know. I had one of my friends. Uh, he committed suicide not long after he got out after Iraq. Yeah. You know. And my buddy called me and told me, and I was just like, dude, what the hell, man? Like, he was doing so good. He goes, I know, bro. He's like, I don't know. You know? So, like, it it, it overcame him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he took his life. So that's why I say it hits really close because I personally know people that it's happened to. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. On both ends. On the combat side and then on the home front side. You know? Yeah. But the good thing is, is that um, I'm going through this therapy right now. It's in vivo therapy through the VA. And it's actually really good. So they make you uh, talk about an incident that's horrific. And then you listen to yourself talk about it. And you listen to yourself talk about it over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then it's supposed to help, like, calm you down or supposed to help manage. You can manage the emotions. Like, you could tell somebody that story. And it's not going to be as bad as if you were to tell them the stories before the therapy. Right. It happens. And I think it's helping me. I think it's I think it's doing good. Well, that's good. I so far. That's helping you. So far, so good. That's good. You know? And then there's these in vivo things where um, things that you don't do anymore because of, you know, things that have happened because you don't want thing you don't want to be triggered. Mm -hmm. um, they make you go do those things. So you got to go do that stuff. And you got to try your best to, like, <laughs> be okay in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's not okay in the beginning. It's really not okay. Yeah. And then it starts to get a little bit better and a little bit better. So I, it's slowly increasing to where it's slowly better and better and better and better. You know? Right. Getting better. So I like it. I think people should go for it. I don't know. I, I think if, if you got... If you're a vet and you have issues with PTSD, you got to look into the new PTSD therapy through the VA. It's actually really good. I really enjoy it. So, it's actually not that bad. I'm glad they finally offer it. Right? Because remember, like, like I was saying, time. yeah, like I was saying before, um, when I was in, you know, when we came back the first time in in, in 04, um, I mean, they were already telling us that if uh, if you go see behavior health, you're going to lose your security clearance. You lose your security clearance, you lose your job. And there's a, I mean, there's a lot of jobs where you don't need a security clearance for, right? They say you don't, but like, if you went to mental health back then, you literally were going to get chaptered out. You're gone. You're done. That's horrible. Yeah. You go see behavioral health, you're done. Just because you wanted to go see help. Right. You were thought less of, you were weak. You know, that was a stigma that was attached to mental health. You're weak, you know? And I was like, so, I mean, like, a lot of us, uh, so what, what do you think we were going to do? We didn't say, shh. Well, we didn't yeah, say nothing. You, you were trained not to. Yeah. We didn't say anything. We just kept going. You were conditioned not to do anything. Right. We, we just, we kept going and we kept doing what we had to do, you know? So, I mean, that's just how you, just how you got through it. I'm glad it's at least finally changing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely changing. And it's definitely something that, as a leader, uh, I definitely pushed mental health on a lot of people. Like, if they needed it, I made sure that they knew that it was available, they knew that it was okay, and that they knew that, you know, go get it. Mm -hmm. Go get that help. You need it, go get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't hold back. And then, so, uh, I think that... That I think that helped because a lot of the times, as like a leader, uh, you gotta you gotta be the change that you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
if you want to make that change, you got to stay in long enough to make that change. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for me, uh, watching, there's a lot of good dudes that could have become really good leaders, but they had some bad leadership and they just didn't stick it out. You know, yeah. they they could have become some really good leaders and they could have they could have been the change that they wanted to see. But they it's, just weren't. They just weren't interested in sticking around to see it. Right. You know. Yeah. And then that leaves all the, all the, the you know, shitty ones. Yeah, it leaves a lot of shitty ones in there that go in and become leaders. And then here you go. Here you are. You got these guys that, you know, they got stripes now. And you know, guys like me got to sit there and <laughs> and try to set this sucker straight because they're not doing they're, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not doing it the right way. They're doing it, you know, some other way. I don't know. They they get a... It's like some people, some of them get like these chevrons on their things and they think they have this like sheriff badge and their poop don't stink. You know what I mean? And then they run into me and then they realize like, oh crap. <laughs> I'll bring the freaking Thor hammer down on them. You know what I mean? And there's yeah. probably a couple people watching this that, that have... That hammer has come down on them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. All in love, though. You know, never held any grudges against anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless they committed the the same things over and over again, then maybe I might have a little grudge against them. But you know, keep beating them. You know. But like, I think a, a motto used to be kind of funny. We used to say it all the time, just joking around. But a motto used to be uh, the beatings will continue until the morale improves. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Ah, that's always funny. He used to go around here. Beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's crazy though. But I'm I'm glad the army's finally gotten into that thing. Um, but I wanted to give you guys some tips for Memorial Day. All right, tip number one: go find um, a cemetery, someone that's doing some sort of memorial for fallen veterans or something like that. There's always places where you can go where there's gravestones of soldiers who were, you know, unaccompanied uh, all the time. They didn't have family members or anything with them. You can go visit their graves, maybe drop a flower off or something for them. Um, and then uh, the number one question that I get asked all the time by idiots all the time is, uh, how many people have you killed? Don't ask a so don't that ask is a veteran. So insensitive. Don't ask don't ask a veteran that question. That is the stupidest question you can ever ask somebody because you can really just set somebody off with that. Because right. then you, you're because then you're putting them back into that mode when they when you ask somebody that question, it doesn't matter who they that all that stuff is going to come back. Right. Now that person just went back to somewhere where they don't where they don't want to be. Mhm. Mm and now all these emotions come back. Mhm. Mm you know what I mean? So like don't ask that question. Just leave it alone. You know? Um, don't thank them for their service. Uh, because uh, it's Memorial Day. It's for those who have fallen and who came back and fell. Um, and it's not for me and my service. I'm still here. You know what I mean? So it's not for me. It's not about me. It's about it's about those. It's about right. them. The right. fallen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about anything else. It should be about that. Now, when it comes to Veterans Day and you want to thank me for my service, cool. Okay. That's Veterans Day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You thank me for my service, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with that one. I feel like a lot of people don't know the <clears throat> difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. I don't think a lot of people do either, but I think it needs to be educated a lot more like people need to know what it is a lot more because I think too many people think uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day are for honoring every soldier Memorial Day is not for that Veterans Day you honor your veterans mm -hmm. Memorial Day you honor the ones that fell right you know mm -hmm. Veterans Day honor all the veterans all of them past present you know what I mean yeah but Memorial Day it's past. Just those that fail. It's Memorial Day. It's in the name, right? So, and I and there's always some sort of celebration or something like that. So, if you're going somewhere and you're celebrating those who have fallen, that's cool. Celebrate them because you know they they did something that a lot of people don't do or won't do. Um, and that's they they served their country. They went to combat, and you know, 
ultimately they fail. A lot of the ones that fall, um, they did it most likely saving someone else's life. You know. Yeah. You know, sometimes things happen, and you know, yeah, things that are out of your control, out of everybody's control, happen. But you know, um, but yeah. But do not thank veterans for their service on Memorial Day. And do not ask them how many people they killed. No. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if your first thought is how many people someone killed, I think you need to stop dissociating and thinking that it's a video game. Right. Because that is not okay. Right. There's like, no, there, yeah, No. nobody wants to, there's no KD... Uh, ratio in uh, an actual combat, you know. Well, it's just like wrong. Like, wh who? I don't know. I don't really understand how someone could just ask that question. I don't. I don't know either. But like, like I said, like you, you wouldn't be surprised. Like that is like the first number one question that people like to ask all the time when they ask, "Have you ever been deployed?" And I said, "Yeah, I've been deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan." Mm -hmm. How many people did you kill, bro? You know what I mean? Like I, I really literally looked at people and I go, Don't ever ask me that again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next that question. Is so insensitive. Like next question, what do you got? You know? Because that changes your whole demeanor. That changes my whole demeanor, that changes my whole thing. Like you wanna ask me about my service? Cool, ask me about my service, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then but if you ask me that, <laughs> I'm just gonna shut down on you. And then you just you just annoyed the crap out of me and I'm just gonna like, literally probably just walk away. Right. You know what I mean? So, don't do that. That's not nice. We don't like that. And don't buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> don't buy a car on Memorial Day. Right? Uh, or at least of... if you are going to, at least know why the holiday exists. Right? Know that you get to buy a car of your own free will because somebody fell for it. Right? Yeah, sure. I don't know. Somebody fought for it. Right. Well, they made it back or they're not, whatever. You know? but yeah. Well, I think that's uh, that's going to be it for uh, today's episode. And we actually had the mic on this time. So I could see the little thing jumping up and down. And I don't know why we didn't notice that the first run through. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't notice it either. It was so weird. At least I figured it out after so we could just refilm right imagine if we took everything down and then we and then we oh my god that would have been so terrible yeah because normally it could have been way worse right because normally we we shoot we stop and then we just break everything down put everything up mm -hmm. super quick boom boom done it's broken down within a few minutes but this time you walked by and you were like oh crap the camera mm -hmm. uh, not the camera but the microphone i was like no way no way Right. And then there was video with no sound. It was like, no way. No I turned way. the volume all the way up and I was like, please, <laughs> let there please be sound. And there was nothing, just static. And I was like, oh. That was funny. Well, episode four, chaos, bled into episode five. But not the second time around because we got the stupid mic on now. And we're good. So thank y'all for watching. Hey, please like, share, follow, whatever's, uh, you know, send this video over to your friends and let your friends watch it. You know, maybe friends or family, somebody's going to want to watch it. Mm -hmm. You know? If you made it this far, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I forgot because I did it in this. I almost didn't do it again. So, Lopez, Solis, and Galette, thank you for the comment in uh, episode three. I did not. Uh, mentioned it in episode four, but episode four, like we said, was absolute chaos. That whole week was chaos, and we're okay this week, but there's still lots of things going on. But we're okay this week. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, deuces. Bye.